Today we're talking about trout fishing and I'm going to show you how I trout fish. So I fish these little creeks and we've got some brown trout in them and brown trout are a little bit more aggressive so I tend to fish with a little jerk bait. Uh, right here I got a little Rapala ultralight minnow. It's the brown trout color, favorite of mine. Um, but this is just the right weight to cast easily and it sinks a little bit. The reason why I like it sinking, I fish downstream with it. When I cast it in front of a lay down, it'll sink and I can get under that lay down or under that cut bank and work it out and that's how I pull them out of there. So you gotta be a little more stealthy when you're coming from up above, cast downstream, let it sink under that lay down and twitch it. You give it some, a series of twitches so it comes out just a little bit, sinks back, just like a little bait fish that's trying to come out of there. It'll dart out and then sink back in there and you'll pull those big trout right out of there. I move kind of quick when I fish, so I, I hit a spot, I make a few casts and then I move on. If, if there's a fish in there, usually the biggest one's gonna hit first and he's gonna hit first cast, second cast. If you bring him out, if you spook him or if he hooks, he's gonna go into hiding and you're not gonna catch him again. So I make a few casts. If I don't get anything that is willing to bite wet right away, I keep walking down the stream. This is a great little bait for that. Like I said, the brown trout are pretty aggressive. I've tried some other baits. You can try like a Panther Martin or a Map Spinner. Uh, there are some other, some other brands, but a lot of the other minnow baits are floaters. With the other minnow baits, you can cast them out you got to jerk them down to get them down but then as they drift back to that lay down that you want to go under they'll drift up and get stuck in it all that brush and stuff like that so this bait nicely goes down and then you can work it up out of there as you retrieve it sometimes it'll come up a little bit uh, depending upon how fast the stream is so this is just kind of a slow gentle stream and uh, these Rapalas work great there's also a little bit smaller size the ultralight four uh, and that was pretty good too I just like the little bit more weight and the, the shape of this six I'm gonna do this over uh, series of days so I'm gonna give you some different footage try to give you some different angles on what I'm talking about try some different spots on the stream I'll just throw in some footage of some fish catches the reason why I don't fish upstream with these is you're coming with the current and as you're twitching that you make a couple twitches and it looks all right and then it just drifts five feet without any action at all until you twitch it again so those fish see that you, you can catch some I've caught some that way but it seems better when you can cast downstream with these and you can kind of twitch them back the whole way or reel them in a little bit they're not moving as fast they kind of blow past them when you're coming with the current it's easier to sneak up on the trout that way because you're coming up from behind them um, but it's harder to make this bait work that way because i use this bait so much i tend to find out how i like to work downstream and uh, once you spook the fish especially when you're when you're going downstream if you spook the fish they're done you're gonna you're not gonna catch those fish as soon as you see a fish and it sees you and it darts off under the cut bank or under the brush consider that one done and just move on to the next spot because you're gonna waste your time sitting there for 20 minutes trying to cast at that nice fish you saw so I just keep moving try to be stealthy but it's not always easy when you're right next to the stream so long casts are important which is why these baits are nice you can make a long cast right down the stream and as you're working it back up hopefully you can catch a fish that hasn't spotted you yet Upstream you can try to pick your spots a little bit better and you might get them uh, But they got to react to it right away because as soon as they see that kind of unnatural just floating downstream They kind of lose interest, but I'll show you right here. We'll just make a long cast There's a little bit of brush on the right Twitch 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 so if you watch in the water you Kind of see how that bait is it's coming with the current I twitch and stop and it just drifts. Twist. If I go the opposite way, and I'm coming up current. It'll look like this. Now as far as being stealthy, sometimes it's good to really just crouch down so you don't have that tall profile as you're working the shoreline. I don't always do that because I don't always have enough time when I'm fishing. I'll just kind of keep walking and moving and hope I can catch one or two. But if you really want to be stealthy, Stay low to the ground. Work your baits like that. Uh, if you come to like a bridge like this, always fish under a bridge. There's usually a hole under there from when they constructed it. This one's a little high. There's not much of a hole there. Let your bait, you can cast, let your bait drift and it will slowly sink. These will slowly sink. And you will snag on a rock. It will slowly sink um, right after you cast, so you can let it get down a little bit and then start working it back. Just catching the day is a nice stick. Now here's a little bit of a brush pile that kind of sticks out into the flow of the stream. There's a little bit of a hole in front of it. 
I uh, used to be a little bit bigger and closer, um, a better brush pile, but floods have kind of pushed it back and out of the way. Uh, but we'll see if we can't get anything. I'm gonna cast uh, the bridge is right here. I can stand on the bridge and uh, cast right down to the middle of it. And you'll see I'm gonna cast about five or ten feet in front of that. Let my bait sink down before it gets to that brush. I'll try to cast far enough to let my bait sink under the brush. That way I can work it out underneath the brush. And if anything's under there, it's just gonna come out and pop that bait. Uh, there could be something in the a little bit of the hole out in front of that. Um, but like I said, just a few casts is all I'll make, and then I'll move on because. If I can't draw something out right away, they're going to react to it or they're not. Uh, I'm not going to waste my time just sitting here making 30, 40 casts. So, three, four, five casts, nothing. I'll move, I'll try a different angle maybe. And uh, that's how I fish little lay downs like this. Right, here's a view from above. I'm going to try to Make a cast and let you see what that looks like from here. Cast about four or five feet in front of that. Let my bait drift back just in front of the brush pile. Work it a few times to get the bait a little deeper maybe. And see if I can't pull something out of there. Just like that. Drift down, twitch, twitch. I work it pretty hard, kind of like a jerk bait for bass. I give it a couple sharp twitches and just work it back. Sometimes I you go pull and then twitch twitch pull with the rod twitch 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 just mix it up a little bit like that now polarized glasses are a very important piece too so i'm going to show you what it looks like through polarized glasses and you can see all those rocks and stuff down there this is through my glasses so you can see the power of polarized lenses compared to no polarized lenses so here's the polarized lens again so without the polarized lens, it's not as easy to sell. Let's talk to you a minute about polarized glasses. Um, I've got a couple pair of Costa Del Mar glasses. These are both fantails. I've got a green mirror and a blue mirror and glass. And um, I had some of the plastic ones before and they just scratched on the inside, wiping them clean. These glass ones have been scratch free. They're a touch heavier on your face. Uh, you might notice it at first, but after that, these ones are just awesome. I don't really have a preference the blue or the green mirror. They're both pretty good. There's a slight color change. The green mirror's got a little bit more of an amber tint to it, so it brightens things up a, a touch. But as far as being able to see in the water in the streams or in lakes, I haven't had really a preference one over the other. Uh, so the choice is kind of yours. I guess I wear these amber ones, the green mirror ones, a little bit more often, uh, just because they kind of brighten it up a touch. Uh, but I don't think you have any, any problems either way. But so far, Costa Del Mar have been good glasses for me, but any kind of polarized glasses are such a big help when you're sight fishing for trout or bass fishing. And you can, even even the trout that you see that you miss, that you scared, gives you an idea that there's some trout around to come back maybe for next time, where the good holes are, where the fish tend to be. So always be watching in the water for any fish activity at all. Um, they can tell you so much, just always watching the water. So get yourself a good pair of polarized glasses. They don't have to be these. These are expensive, I know. but. Any kind of polarized glasses, probably even the cheap ones will work. Something to cut the glare so you can see the fish through the water. I'm just going to work this section how I normally would and see if we can't catch something on, uh, on film. Another thing that's critical, learn how to cast from both sides of your body, especially on a stream. You're going to have a lot of blocked, obstructed cast from trees and whatnot. So learn how to cast from the right and the left and just straight vertical. Um, little pitches, learn how to feather your reel with your finger. You're just slowing down that bait without a sudden stop of the reel handle. Nice soft landing. Usually I use my thumb and just kind of slide it, put it right over there, nice and light. But I can also cast the other way and get it right on the spool lip where that line's kind of coming off. And that will save you a lot of trouble from getting snagged into trees and still keeping your cast good. Just learn how to do that. Spinning gear is what I prefer. This is a 
St. Croix Premier. This is a six foot medium light power, fast action. Uh, it's a two piece rod so I can keep it in my car. And I can stop at any little creek real quick. Uh, I've also got the, the Stratic CI4 Plus. It doesn't have to be this reel. It's an expensive reel I know, but it balances with this rod very nice. I know it's got a good drag. I'm using five pound Sunline Sniper line with this. Um, it casts really nice for a fluorocarbon and it's had good strength. I've been very happy with that line. So, and it's good, it's good and thin uh, for these trout, so I'm not spooking too many of them. Could go low, lighter if you want, uh, but that's my setup. St. Croix Premier. I like the, the medium light. A lot of guys use ultra light. Uh, that can help you when you're casting the real tiny uh, baits, but with these heavier Rapala ultralight minnows, you don't need so light and whippy of a rod. I don't like the whippiness of an ultralight. Trying to set the hook on a fish and the rod just gives. You get no hook setting power. Uh, I can't work a, a bigger fish out of any cover because I have no strength really in my rod. So I prefer this medium light. St. Croix is a little heavier than most. So that might almost be like a medium action rod. But then I know I've got some hook setting power. And if I happen to be short a rod and I'm going bass fishing from shore, I can grab this super light setup and still have enough hook setting power to set into a bass and fight a bass so it's kind of a good all-around rod but it does really well with trout fishing now let's see if we can catch them well, i have a problem I cast it over a branch and twitched it off of there, but I jerked too hard. I broke the lip right off of the bait. Uh, it happened, it's happened before on me a couple times. Uh, you cast over a branch or whatever, and you give it too hard of a jerk, and these little plastic clips will break. Um, doesn't happen very often, but when it does happen, this bait still looks okay. Uh, I didn't bring any others with me in my pocket. Uh, usually I keep an, a spare one. Uh, I didn't bring any today, uh, so I'm just gonna keep fishing this. Without the lip, you've really got to twitch it uh, to make it make any action. It's got a pretty good action. We'll see if we can't catch anything on it still. Um, it doesn't dive down quite as deep, but you can still work it back and forth almost like a twitch bait on the surface. Um, it'll sink down a little ways and you can get it to twitch. So we'll see if we can't trick anything, even with our broken bait. first cast got it right under there hit right away and I played it too long or something and lost that one decent fish probably 14 inch or so uh, so uh, maybe there's hope try to catch another one keep watching tricky spot because you can only come at the stream which is perpendicular to it. You don't have a way to work up and down the side uh, so I can, I can sneak up there as best I can and make a, a cast across stream. It's going to drift real short area. It's just going to drift so that's not where I want to go. It's a long pool. Um, I'll try that first see if I can get anything that's really aggressive and then I'll slowly get closer and closer and then try to work downstream or upstream and uh, hit the hole that way.
log, there's a little bit of an undercut. Even though I'm going to be standing right over top of the fish, it's always good to try a couple casts. You'll be surprised what will shoot out from right underneath your feet and grab something. So always make a couple jerks uh, just right along and anything like that. Always watch for trees above you when you're casting. Sometimes you'll uh, cast right up into a branch and uh, snag your lure or break your line, like me. A little brown trout. Still kinda got his old marking, his baby markings on him. Little brown band, so let's get him back in the water. go nice brown trout probably a 14 incher Get it back in the water so not a bad one it's a 10 incher or something like that beautiful brown trout all right guys uh, we're gonna give it a try we just had a bunch of rain last night and then this morning there was an hour of just a hard hard downpour so uh, the creek is flooded, but we're going to give it a shot, see if the big trout are biting right now. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's not nearly as big as I expected. Not nearly as big. That's a nice, I don't know, 12 inch or so. Go flooded river trout number one. Well, it's fish. Dirty water, it's kind of hard, but these Rapalas will work. They can see that flash, that bigger body, so it'll work. I should have probably almost used a bigger Rapala. See, I don't make this many repeated cast to areas on this creek when it's clear. First couple casts, if they don't bite it, they're not interested. So I usually move on. But with dirty water like this, you gotta keep making casts because the fish can't see it. So you gotta try to get it right by their faces. So. Oh, crap. I can... Broke my rod tip. Broke my rod tip. I had a strike uh, for that fish I've been trying. And uh, it came right out and nailed it as I was just swimming it in fast set the hook my lure came flying hit my pole right here broke it now i need another trout fishing rod i don't have one yep that doesn't make for a good day and i lost my lure it broke off and it's down here somewhere somebody's been fishing here left their can of crawlers. I don't know if they were here today or not, but they're still fresh, so. Not fresh, they're still alive. Maybe I should try that. At least pick up their junk for them. Oh good, more trash. So we'll pick that up too. Well, I had a little trout come up and chase my bait for a second, uh, but we didn't get them to go. Sometimes that's a color issue with your lure. So a different color. I'm using a black and silver, which isn't my favorite. Obviously, obviously not the trout's favorite either. Well, there it goes. Lost the lure. We uh, had a good attempt. It's a good spot right there, but it's, uh, the current blows, pushes it right past that little lay down, and it sweeps your bait right behind it. It's hard to get around it. Need a longer pole to be able to do that, work that right. 10 foot pole and you'd be able to do it fine. Oh well, let's pick up the trash we found. All 
All right, by the way, I got a new uh, new trout rod. Not much different than my last one. I had a six foot medium light St. Croix Premier two piece rod before. And uh, all I did was go with a six six two piece medium light St. Croix Premier. There we go. I am there. 12 inch or so. First fish on the new trout rod. Nice little trout. Could be an eater, but we're gonna let him go. Oops. Well, we just missed one. It was a little guy, 10 inches or so. Um, same spot we caught one yesterday. Uh, that one yesterday was a little bit bigger. Uh, but same spot, so I'm not catching them anywhere else. I saw a couple move or flash at my bait, but. I uh, couldn't get him to bite. I saw a couple of little ones rising for bugs, a uh, little bug hatch. You can see it because I cast upstream, caught this nice brown. Mid-August, we just had a rainstorm. Poured real hard for an hour or two. Real nice brown. Nice spots on it. Almost at him. So you saw that. That was a good trout. Not huge, but a good one. For sure. Put up a nice one big jump.